to be using my SUV tent anymore. I've decided that um, although it takes two people to set it up, I was able to do it with just myself several times um, while I was out in National Forest out west. And I found it very comfortable. I really, really liked it. One big problem is that I can't take it down quickly. So it's one of those tents that in an emergency, I would have to leave it behind. And I really don't want to do that. So I gave it to my nephew, my brother's son, Peyton. Um, he just bought an SUV. And so now he has an SUV tent. How about that? So, um, about the SUV tent, I needed to sew it up while I was here. And uh, let me show you what I had to do. It was in a tornado and it ripped one huge rip as well. Uh, um, one of the PVC pipes actually broke um, uh, and one of the PVC elbows bent. So I didn't want to give Peyton a broken tent. So I repaired the rip right there. I hand sewed it and I uh, put silicone and uh, uh, glue over it. This is what it looks like on the other side of the tent. As you can see, it was a very large rip. Here's my hand to give you an idea of just how big it was. And then there was um, a broken pole. It's right here. You see, I used Gorilla tape to put it back together again. It is a weak spot in the uh, tent, but unfortunately it can't be replaced. And here is the last weak spot. I have some Velcro around the, um, the bent part. The reason I put the Velcro on there is to prevent it from tearing the tent. It would eventually rip through it. I'm going to uh, Gorilla tape it. In fact, I'm gonna do that right now. And even though it is a weak spot in the tent, it still um, has, I've had it up for quite a while since I've been here and it has held really, really well under high winds. The clam also sustained damage during the tornado. So I fixed that. It was a big rip. In fact, several of them and uh, all of them are sewed and sealed. Inside here. This is used to be a tornado tent, right? It was up during a tornado, and the tornado, um, I had to take it down before the tornado took it away. But what did the tornado do to it before? It made a massive whip hole. Yes, it did. A whip. Right here. This is the whip. Yes. This damage. And I'm going to sew that while I'm here because where I'm going, I need this tent and I need it to be in good working order. Every craft store pretty much has this stuff. Silly winks. But it's the foam sheet. Very and this good. is five millimeter thick, the thicker one. Okay. So here's the foam. I stick it under the corner, making sure 
that it's under the grommet too, and under the webbing, and under the all of those corners that intersect. I'm going to drive it through, the stake through it. And this prevents abrasion to to the to the fabric that holds the ends of the poles down. These things can lift and move side to side and lift up and down in a high wind. Mm -hmm. And that wears out the fabric that's holding the poles at the bottom. So okay. then they would just come poking through. So that's it. It's just a real simple and inexpensive solution. I sealed the top of my tent. Um, I put silicone on it, Scotch Guard type stuff, because it had worn away from when I put it on a, almost two years ago. And I was getting quite a bit of water through the ceiling. Um, the silicone has stopped the water from leaking through the top. Um, this is a very humid climate that I'm in, and so every morning I wake up with a bunch of dew, and it just drips right through my clam and all over my equipment, and so or whatever equipment. Like I have to close my uh, Coleman stove at night simply because the burners will be wet in the morning if I don't. So I am uh, re-siliconing it so that I don't have to go through all of that trouble every single night. And I figured that I will put enough silicone on there so that in the Florida climate, it, the moisture doesn't seep through. And um, when I'm out west, no big deal it's because it's a dry climate. It's working well already, but I'm going to go ahead and put that second coat on anyway. The second coat I'm putting on, not only on the outside, but on the inside. So it's a really windy day in the neighborhood. In fact, it has been for the last couple of days. So some of the things that I had to do to batten down included I removed the SUV tent because it just does not do well in wind. So I took it up. Um, as you can see, I removed the canopy off of its stand. I moved my vehicle so that it's providing a wind break for my clam to protect it. And the reason I put them in that um, location is because the wind is coming out of the northwest of that area. And as you can see, it really blows around the clam. So, not so much. It did very well yesterday and today. I also lower the wind panels. Don't know why they call them wind panels, because all they do is take your tent down if you leave them up. Usually I have a center support. And I took that uh, down because when it's windy, it causes the ceiling to balloon no matter what. And the support will fall. So what I'm going to do to remedy that so that I can still have my support pole is to purchase a uh, tripod for the bottom of the pole. Okay. And then... Um, all day yesterday, I had my Coleman stove um, down, but I just made my coffee, so uh, it's still up, but I will put it back down. The setup that I normally have, uh, my car rods go across the, from corner to corner on each side of the clam. I attach them to the PVC piping, and... Um, I needed to take those down because they add a bit of weight to the uh, PVC piping and again can cause the roof to come down in high winds. It doesn't happen um, at all um, when the wind is not blowing. And you know what? It has been really nice to have uh, the camper. I um, have never used one before so to be able to admire this beautiful area from the perspective of 
Um, this awesome thing is, uh, has been a pleasure. So I just showed you what I had to do in order to batten down from the wind. This is something that is um, fairly easy, especially now that I have the use of a camper trailer for a couple of months. However, when I'm uh, normally camped out somewhere, it's just me and my vehicle and my tents. It is not easy to batten down in, in those instances because everything has to go inside my vehicle. I sleep inside my vehicle and, uh, and don't necessarily live inside of it. I live out of it with uh, um, nature as my living room. However, when the weather is bad, that's not always possible. So I need to live inside my vehicle with all that stuff. Now, there is, a, as you can see, I didn't empty out my tent entirely. And the reason is, I, in fact, I didn't take my tent down because I had the wind blocked off from the clam. And that doesn't mean it still won't come down. Um, if the wind gets strong enough, it will. Right now, the gusts are about 30 miles an hour, um, but the average is about 17, and it's doing just fine. And it seemed much worse and still stood without any block. <laughs> so... Um, and when I say much worse, um, I'm talking desert winds of um, Arizona and New Mexico, Florida winds, which have a bit of a, a break to them because of the landscape. The barren landscape of the desert doesn't allow for any break, so you get the full brunt of those winds. So, um, parking, where I park my vehicle is really important in the desert, too.